when we talk about the high dynamic range rendering, we should mention uh, the color management or the tone mapping. And in this chapter, we'll compare Blender default color management, which involves sRGB render transform and the filmic color management, which essentially tries to emulate the way in which real film medium interacts with light. Right, guys, so here you can see that we have set up uh, the HDRI environment, which uses the Kiara interior HDRI by Greg Zal. This is a 32-bit photo, which was merged from a bunch of photos with different exposures, and it has an amazing contrast between this super bright sky and the interior itself. First, let's come over to the Environment tab, scroll down, and activate this Multiple Importance Sampling, and set the map resolution to 2048. This will help us to reduce the light and noise coming from the environment. What I want to do now is play around with the environment uh, to set up a kind of backlighting. So I'm making sure that I'm in the Environment tab of the Node Editor, then I'm pressing the Z Rotation, and I'm holding Shift and dragging it right. I'm holding Shift uh, because I want to tweak it in the small increments. I want to have a super precise control. Mm -hmm. Right away, we stumble across the first problem, which is this overbright pixels. Oh my goodness, all what we see is just pure white. This is not what we can expect even from the cheapest camera. What happens here is this. Uh, the Blender default render transform sRGB transforms uh, high dynamic range values to the display referred values in a non-linear fashion. Basically, that means that the scene referred values produced by cycles are cut off at 1. The filming Blender transform behaves in a very different way. It applies so-called logarithmic falloff. It takes the values much brighter than 1 and it tries to fit them into what we see on our displays. That gives us the wider dynamic range to play with and it helps us to avoid this clipping of colors, this clamping of the range. Once again, the window in this 32-bit environment texture is far brighter than white, and the default render transform just cuts out this part of the range. But that's not what we'd like to see, eh? To improve on this behavior and to solve this problem, we can install Filmic Blender color management. This is an amazing add-on by Troy Sabotka, and it brilliantly solves this clipping problem. And by the way, Filmic Color Management is included by default in Blender 2.79, so feel free to use the default option instead if you wish. How to install Filmic Color Management? Actually, Greg Zal has created an add-on that helps us to install the Filmic Blender add-on. Uh, you can download it from this page, the link is in the description. Okay, let's go File, User Preferences, and open the Add-ons tab. And by the way, this is Deep, the add-on that helps you to install another add-on. Mm -hmm. Click Install from File. Then we get to folder where you put the file downloaded from Greg's Al page and click Install from File. Now we can search for Filmic. And I have already installed this. So it shows this checkbox enabled. Okay, and after you install it in the Color Management tab, you should have this kind of menu that says Install Filmic Blender. When you see this button, click on it. I have done it already, so I have this menu which uh, allows us to pick the uh, view transform mode, the look, and so on. In a moment, I will show you yet another problem of the default render transform. If you crank up the exposure, the colors become oversaturated, like you see here. If we want to emulate the traditional film medium, we expect a kind of a different behavior. We expect that the colors will become less saturated as the exposure gets higher. Okay, let's switch to the filmic log encoding base. And right away you see that the image became kind of flat. That's how the logarithmic falloff works. We can compensate for this by choosing base contrast in the look menu. It looks gorgeous. And what's important, we start to see the details outside the window. It was totally clipped and now we start to see the details. Now we can tweak the exposure, we can decrease it. And when you set the value to minus 2, it becomes even more clear. Here I made a quick comparison at the exposure set to minus 2. On the left you see the default color management, and on the right you see filmic stuff. And of course, filmic shows a wider range of color values. 
that's exactly what we need, especially when we work with the high dynamic range stuff, like HDRI environments, and with the image-based lighting. Okay, so let's crank up the exposure. And hooray, the colors no longer get oversaturated. That's another little thing that brings us closer to photorealism, I should say. These are all very small steps, but together, when you're dealing with HDRI, with image-based lighting, with tone mapping or render transform, these little things really matter. Once again, let's take a look at these examples. Uh, we are cranking up the exposure, and the standard tone mapping produces the oversaturated colors, while the filmic one just keeps it slightly desaturated. And of course, we enjoy the benefits of being able to display more information, more color data in the image. Which is always good. It's so good that I want to start singing right in the middle of the tutorial. Is that okay? I don't think so. It's kind of weird. Okay, so we have a bunch of looks here. You can experiment with the higher contrast looks, but personally I prefer to stick to the base contrast look because I feel safe this way. I'm not afraid of blown out highlights and stuff like that. Also, we have a bunch of other things like a grayscale mode, which occasionally may come in handy. And also we have this thing that is called false color. What it does, it assigns the color map to the pixel values, and the hotter is the pixel, the more reddish it becomes. In this part of the image, uh, the clipping can occur. So to counteract it, you can lower the exposure, you can do something else to make sure you don't have these pure white spots in the image, which store no information whatsoever. But I think one or two overexposed parts are actually okay. Personally, I'm fine with it. Right? Fantastic. And a few other things that I want to share with you are these. If you're going to use the Mix RGB node in your materials, for example, here we go, Mix RGB. Only few blending modes are compatible with the scene referred workflow or with Filmic. Add is okay, Multiply is okay, Subtract is okay. Add, Multiply and Subtract won't mangle your color data. But Overlay and other so-called Photoshop blending modes will mangle the color data. And the other important thing uh, is that if you're gonna use the color balance node in the compositor, don't use the standard Leaf Gamma Gain mode, because basically it ruins the math of cycles. Just use Offset Power Slope. This node will allow you to accomplish the same kind of things, uh, color grade or image or whatever, but it won't ruin the colors. Okay, folks, that was a brief and hopefully very enjoyable introduction to tone mapping in Blender, to color management in Blender. And that's how filmic color management helps us to get more photorealistic results with a wider dynamic range. Oh, and feel free to visit creativeshrimp.com to get the full course. And press thumbs up and subscribe.